All right, still in Africa, the Confederation of Zimbabwe Industries, an industry lobby group uh, in Zimbabwe, published a paper on Friday that accused the Zimbabwean government of plans to raid foreign exchange accounts belonging to citizens. Zimbabwe Central Bank said it has no reason or appetite to raid foreign exchange accounts and denied the allegations. The published paper also asked the central bank to dump its weekly foreign currency auction. Joining us to discuss further uh, from Zimbabwe is economist Eddie Cross. Uh, good morning, Eddie, or rather good afternoon. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, what do you make of the allegations of uh, dollar account raiding from the Confederation of Zimbabwe Industries? Are, are they being alarmist, for instance? I think they are. Um, <clears throat> I don't think there's any evidence that the government intends to raid foreign exchange accounts. And I, I, from my past experience, and I was a member of the Monetary Policy Committee for some time and a non-executive director of the Reserve Bank, from my experience, that would be a no-no, an absolute no-no. We've done, we've done that in the past, and it had dire consequences for us as a country. We're not going to do that any, uh, again. All right. And uh, Zimbabwe's uh, central bank governor, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Magundaya, uh, is quoted to have said the following, put up that quote, says the impressions depicted therein from that report are unfortunate and uncalled for as they have the potential of destabilizing financial markets and the economic stability of the country. Do, do you agree with that? No, I don't. I think I think he was he was overly defensive of his own position. And I felt that his his response to the CZI paper, which was actually quite good and focused on the exchange rate management system here, I thought it was uh, rather weak. Uh, I, 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 I felt he, he made some mistakes in responding in that way to, to, to the CZI document, because I think some of the CZI document, in fact, most of it, con uh, deserves consideration at the highest level. Okay, so let's get into that. What, one of the... Um, parts of that paper that they published is the suggestion that the central bank should suspend its weekly foreign currency auctions. Now, Mr. Governor Maguda says it will lead to a shortage of goods and rising inflation. What do you make of that uh, debate, that back and forth? Well, in a, in a sense, they're both right and they're both wrong. Um, <clears throat> because um, I think the auction has basically run its, run its course. It's no longer meeting full demand for domestic domestic demand for foreign exchange, and its exchange rate is really not representative of the market conditions. Um, but at the same time, um, until you put something else in its place, it is the only real indicator of a, a real market for foreign exchange in Zimbabwe. And I think that closing it down prematurely would, in fact, be the wrong thing to do. I think if we were able to increase the volume of foreign exchange onto the auction, that would be a substantial step forward. But uh, they're not going to do that. My own personal view is that we simply have to uh, bite the bullet and liberalize. Okay, thanks for mentioning that. The, I guess of, according to uh, zimpricecheck.com, official rates 155, parallel market rates 360. Um, if you're saying you need to liberalize, then how, what, what would you use to describe the foreign exchange situation in Zimbabwe? Now, is it illiquidity? No, no. We've got plenty of liquidity. Um, in fact, we don't have a shortage of foreign exchange at all. And you can see that if you just go into the marketplace. There are no, significant, there are no shortages in the market here in Zimbabwe. So we're meeting import demand for foreign exchange. The problem is that our exchange rate mechanism is really peculiar to Zimbabwe and em emerges from our historical uh, roots. And what we've got to do is get back to normal. And I think what we, what we ought to do is uh, lift exchange control on the current account and allow the banks to trade foreign exchange freely amongst themselves. And, um, and I think if we did that, uh, the local currency would strengthen very substantially. I don't think there's any justification for the parallel market rate of 360. Uh, it represents a, a small, small part of the whole, whole industry, and it's simply not representative of the real supply and demand situation. You know, you're, you're echoing comments that were made by the similar situation, kind of similar in, in Nigeria. The central bank governor um, here in Nigeria, well, he's in, at the sidelines of the IMF World Bank spring meetings. He was asked about this for Nigeria, and he said the same thing about Nigeria having peculiar 
FX situations like you're talking about now with Zimbabwe having peculiar FX situations. Just to follow up, if you liberalize, what about speculators and the possibility of the exchange rate just, you know, blasting past 155 or 360 and going higher? What, isn't there a danger there? No, not at all. I don't see any danger of that whatsoever. Because at the moment we have a surplus of foreign exchange as against our, our domestic demand. And if the rate was liberalized, I think the problem we would have is we would have to buy foreign exchange off the market to keep the rate relatively weak, uh, which would be a strategy that I would fully support to keep our export industries viable. Okay. Now, you should so good. So the market is liquid. Now, in, there's another part of the report from the CZI was talking about um, dollarization of the economy. Insurance firm Old Mutual, their unit in Zimbabwe, in its quarterly economic brief, said on Friday that dollarization is inevitable. Pretty strong words. Well, what, what do you make of that? Uh, talking twaddle. There's no possibility of Zimbabwe um, going back to the U.S. dollar. None at all. Um, it's not government policy and it doesn't make sense. And I think that uh, this, the old mutual is not the only one. Imara Asset Management, which is one of the biggest asset managers in the country, they said exactly the same thing. Um, and quite frankly, they, 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 just, <clears throat> they just do not know what they're talking about in this particular area. And uh, I think on the contrary, I think we're going to, in fact, um, de-dollarize completely before very long. It's the only way to go forward. So I'm glad you mentioned that. We have another quote from Central Bank Governor of uh, Zimbabwe. He said, and let's put it up there, he says, the government and the banks will pursue an orderly de-dollarization process, and hence it is false that a money currency system is now in place. So, so uh, how would that work exactly? And isn't that an admission that there's too much U.S. dollars in the system already? Uh, partly. What, you know, it's very difficult to de-dollarize once you've dollarized. Um, ask any country that's gone through that process. And uh, <clears throat> when, we de when we dollarized back in 2009, it stabilized the country overnight. It uh, had enormous benefits, but at the same time, it killed our productive sector. And we became an, an importer of just about everything that we needed. Um, now that we've got our own currency back, um, I think what we've got to do is to foster its, its, its use within the country to the, to the maximum that we can. And there's a lot more we could do in that respect, especially on the tax side. But in addition to that, I think we've got to recognize that we need a conventional exchange rate process. Uh, what we're pursuing at the moment is unique to Zimbabwe. It, you won't find any of the academic institutions in the world which teach the kind of system that we've got. I mean, recently, for example, Somalia was able to st stabilize their exchange rate by doing just that. Now, if Somalia can do it, we're much bigger, much more sophisticated than Somalia. And I would suggest that really the reluctance to go that route is purely based on the fact that so many people are making money out of the present chaos. And so ultimately, I mean, what's the way out? Is it to, you know, de-incentivize those who are making money off the system by what you suggested earlier? You can't fight the market. So you've got to use market mechanisms to fix the problem. And the way to do that is exactly what I'm, not, what I'm proposing, is that you lift exchange control. So you don't have bureaucrats making decisions on what will be paid and what won't be paid and people can get access to foreign exchange from their banks. And then you float the currency and you allow the banks to trade the currency freely. Um, and what will emerge from that process will be an exchange rate which clears the market. And uh, once we've established that, then I think we can move on. And uh, I, I don't see any reason why that would not stabilize the situation in this country. The, the economy, the base economy here is growing strongly. Um, I would say we're the most fastest growing economy in Southern Africa at the present time. Um, so there's nothing fundamentally wrong with our basics. It's just the way in which we're trading foreign exchange that we've got to fix. And I think we could fix that in 24 hours. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Eddie Cross, uh, economist in Harare, Zimbabwe. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about the FX situation there. We appreciate your time.